Um, my name is uh, Cliff Ages, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, .NET and IoT, um, which isn't something I know a lot of people uh, are aware you can do. Um, this talk is normally a half hour talk, um, so I'm going to be quick and whiz through it quite quickly. Um, so uh, questions at the end, if you don't mind. Um, normally, if you're doing IoT, if you're starting out, then you uh, you start with an Arduino board, uh, like one of these, an Arduino Uno or, or something. They're fairly cheap boards, 20, 30 pounds. You can get most of these. Um, you hook up some resistors, some LEDs, make things flash and blink, um, maybe a servo to drive something. Um, but these are you kind of, you know, you're starting beginner stuff. Um, they have these sorts of boards in schools and colleges as well. Um, so this is where you're starting out. You're going to move on to something a bit more professional, um, maybe you're using it in IoT projects. Um, I do a lot of IoT projects for clients. Um, I use both these Adafruit and uh, PRJC boards in projects I'm working on, and they'll run quite happily off a, a, a LiPo battery. Um, you can see the LiPo um, JST sockets um, on the um, on the boards just here. Um, so you can plug a, a battery in um, quite happily, uh, and they'll run on a battery. I put these uh, in a farmer's field and left them running for a couple of months off, off a simple LiPo battery with a little um, solar panel just to keep it topped up. Um, and they've got all sorts. You've got ones with Bluetooth, with Wi-Fi, with uh, 3G, um, you know, on the Adafruit side. The PRJC ones are more of a uh, same form factor as the Adafruit Feather, um, but they're a bit more powerful. They've got a bit more grunt uh, and um, they're super low power as well. So uh, um, you can run them on even uh, less uh, battery power if needed. Um, but you know, the Arduino system uses a C kind of C++ esque um, language. They've basically taken the C and C++ language and they've taken out all the bits to do with like a, a, your video display, your stand in, stand out. And um, so they've taken it and tinkered and played with it and made Arduino C as, um, as it's kind of known really. So when uh, the bootloader of your Arduino board starts up, it, it calls the, uh, the setup and then that is your, it's once it runs through that setup uh, method. Uh, and at the end of that, it doesn't actually say it, but it automatically calls loop. And then loop is what it says in the name. It just loops around. It's like a game loop. You just keep going around, around that loop forever and a day until you run out of battery power or, or you pull the plug in your board, um, which is fine. It looks simple. And the code there is literally turning uh, pin 13, uh, digital right is pin 13, it's turning it higher, so turning the voltage on, waiting a second and turning it low. So literally it's turning an LED on and off. Fairly simple. What if we move to something a bit more complex um, now this is the arduino ide uh, and i'll come a bit more of that later this is basically just a neopixel which is uh, 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 um, an led which has got three colors in it an rgb color system inside the pixel if you can see here all this is doing is just changing the color of the pixel um, but there's a fair bit of code there a lot of that is comments i get that but you've got like a lot of if defs and defines of pins and number pin number pixels um, you know, you've got, it, you know, you're starting to get more and more into the C world, which as .NET developers, we may not be comfortable with. It may not be kind of our bag, it may not be where we're happy um, to work. Um, you know, you've got headers files and, and C++ files um, to worry about as well. Also, you've got the Arduino IDE. Now, if anyone that's used the Arduino IDE knows full well that it's a pretty basic system. Um, it's effectively notepad with a few kind of bells and whistles added. Um, but it's not brilliant. So you've got to worry about that as well. But there is a get out. If you do want to go down the Arduino line, then you can use your favorite um, tool, Visual Studio. Uh, and there is um, Visual Micro is an add-on for Visual Studio, which allows you to program the Arduino tool set. Um, so the Feather, the Tinsy, or the um, actual um, homegrown Arduino boards. It allows you to program those. Still in the Arduino language, but you can do it all within Visual Studio, it connects to the board, and it also gives you back F9, um, so you can do a bit of debugging as well, so you can, you can stop. And what that does is when you put a breakpoint on a, a line of code, when it reaches that line of code, um, when it's doing the build, it inserts a little while loop, and it waits for, uh, for you to click uh, next. Um, so that little, little while loop is just waiting for a keyboard command. Um, so it sits there and waits. So then you can go in and look at uh, memory locations and look at the data that's in there. It's very clever. Um, it's, it used to be free, but now it's, it's a fairly cheap uh, annual fee or you can buy a perpetual uh, license. Uh, I use it all the time in my projects that I'm doing. I highly recommend it. And um, the, uh, the, 
the URL is down here at the bottom. Uh, if you were to go onto there and uh, and give it a look, it's fantastic. I can't recommend it highly enough. But we're .NET developers. This is a .NET meetup, so we want to talk about .NET. Now I know you're all thinking yourself, but Cliff Raspberry Pi they do .NET. Um, yeah, the Raspberry Pi Four is uh, is there. It's new. It's thirty dollars or thirty pounds. Um, to buy a Raspberry Pi, and then you need a, uh, to plug it into the wall because it needs 15 watts of power. Um, so 15 watts at 5 amps, because it's USB-C, is 3 amp. Uh, uh, 15 watts at 5 volts, um, because it's USB-C, C, is 3 amps of power. So it's drawing 3 amps, which isn't a lot. You know, your cat will draw is about, you know, 10 to 12, doesn't it, um, to boil a cup of tea. But 3 amps from a battery isn't going to happen, or it won't happen for very long. But this is a full-featured Raspberry Pi board. You can run .NET on it, um, and there's a fantastic um, blog post down at the bottom here. Uh, you can see um, Pete Codes, uh, Pete Gallagher is. Uh, he does a lot of uh, IoT and .NET stuff as well. He's written a great blog post. If you want to get your Raspberry Pi running .NET um, five, um, then you can. But you need to plug it into the wall, which isn't really IoT. Um, for me, IoT is the fact that I can leave it out in the middle of a muddy field and come back to it a couple of weeks later and collect the data, or I can have it out in uh, in, in a, um, a hard to reach location and it's sending data up to uh, IoT hubs and Azure. Um, that for me is IoT, um, not something that's plugged into a wall. Because if I can plug it into a wall, why not just use a normal PC, um, like an Intel Nook or something, and just plug it in? And I've got a screen and everything else. Um, all right, Raspberry Pi does have a screen, so. We come across the Meadow, uh, which is by Wilderness Labs, the Meadow F7 Micro. Now this here um, is uh, the the board is. I'll take that back. Uh, the, board, the board is uh, the same form factor as the uh, the Tinsy and the uh, Adafruit um, boards I showed earlier, except for this um, this this part over here. I've forgotten how to do the um, how to do the boxes now. Um, it's this bit over here. This section here is um, is uh, is added on, and what that's got is the uh, ESP32, which is running the uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth section of the board. Now, everything from there onwards, where you can see the holes, the through holes with the white boxes around them, um, to the right is all the same form factor, exactly the same pinout as the uh, as the Adafruit and uh, PRJC boards. Um, so it's quite, a, it's becoming a bit of a standard, this, uh, this Adafruit Feather uh, system. Um, but this board runs .NET. Now we're .NET like developers, so we can now do IoT. How does that work? Well, looking at the features, Arduino said, you know, um, only certain models have Wi-Fi. It's not .NET. Um, there was a, a version of .NET that uh, the Wilderness Labs um, supported uh, for a while, but that's now died. Um, you know, only certain models uh, with low energy you can run off a battery. Um, the Raspberry Pi, as we said, there is no low energy version. You have to plug it into a wall. Um, yes, you can run .NET, um, but the Meadow has everything. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi built in. You've got full .NET standard. Um, it's got libraries for all your favorite IoT things like motors, encoders, um, you know, um, uh, e-ink screens, uh, anything you need, you know, buttons and stuff like this, um, you know, sensors, humidity sensors, they have libraries in the foundation for, for, for pulling these in and using them. So we look at the board again. It's a fairly simple board. It's got 16 meg of RAM. So you've got a fair bit of RAM on there. It's got flash storage as well, 32 meg of flash storage. So you can, you can read data from the sensor and store it on board. Um, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, the Wi-Fi is working. The Bluetooth at the moment is still, um, this, this system is still in uh, beta release, so beta um, 401 at the moment, uh, 4.0.1. Um, and uh, Bluetooth is is nearly there. It's not quite there. It's got some bugs around it, and Bluetooth stack is quite um, a challenging stack to uh, to pull in. Uh, and they're trying to do it super low power as well um, to save the battery. But it's got an onboard um, onboard battery charger, so you can plug a LiPo battery into it. And you know, if you've got USB, you're plugging into your reading data. It will be charging up the battery for you. Um, it's all there, um, and you know, it's quite a quick um, ARM uh, M7 chipset that's on there as well. So that's the uh, the board that we, we want to play with. Now, the stack that's on there, how do they get it to work? How do they get it to run .NET? Well, if you start at the bottom of the stack there, you've got the uh, micro uh, RTOS, uh, which is the real-time operating system. So that's the, 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 the system that runs at the bottom. On top of that, they stack the mono runtime. Um, 
we all know mono, if you do anything to do with Xamarin, um, you know it all runs on a mono runtime. Um, it's exactly the same because the team that built this, uh, Brian Katnash and the likes, um, they were ex uh, Xamarin team members. So they've taken what they know from Xamarin and uh, .NET and basically put it on a really small board. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the .NET Standard 2.0 uh, API and then the security layer above that that stops you accessing that uh, OS and making any changes. Then you've got the core, which is all your GPIO, which is general purpose input outputs, uh, security, graphics, networking, all that is into the core. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the foundation, which is all your drivers and libraries that you use for, uh, for playing with your servos, with playing with your um, LEDs, all your sensors, GPS sensors, etc. So it's quite a, 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 a in-depth stack. The OS and the core is done by the uh, in-house Wilderness Labs team. But the foundation is, uh, you know, it's in the name, like the .NET Foundation, it's all open source. You can go in there, look at the code, pull it down, make a change, tweak it, and push it back up uh, onto GitHub for the rest to play with. So we'll have a quick demo. If I now switch across to, uh, where is the Visual Studio gone? There we go. Uh, to Visual Studio. If we go into um, program and if we look at this, so this is here is, is effectively, is just like a, uh, a command um, uh, you know, uh, application. So we come in with our static void main uh, and all we do is instantiate a new Meadow app. So again, they've taken this is exactly the same as the way uh, a Xamarin app works. It comes in and it instantiates a new app. Um, so it creates that new app and then just sits there and sleeps infinitely in the uh, static void main. So it just sits there just like the setup does in Arduino. If we go across to the Meadow app and we look at the top, it comes in and then we create an app and you can see here that they're, uh, they've got the um, F7 Micro and Meadow app. Uh, the F7 Micro bit is they're saying, this is the board we're gonna program against, this is the hardware. So obviously they're, they're thinking ahead that there might be other versions of these boards uh, in the future. Um, and then they, we instantiate a, uh, a, a onboard LED and then just like in the uh, Arduino software, uh, again, you copy across here. So we create uh, the Meadow app. So we've got a constructor. We do the initialization and then we call cycle colors. So in, in our init method, we just write into the console. Just so we're initializing the hardware. That's just because. And then we create an onboard LED on the, um, on the boards that you get from, um, from uh, Meadow F7. There's a LED. Um, and this is the, uh, the same NeoPixel that's used on the, on the uh, Adafruit boards. Uh, and that's your, your RGB color boards. So just setting that up, you turn it your device, you tell it which pin each of the, uh, the three colors are on, the red, green, and blue. And uh, they've pulled it out for you and, uh, and created the, uh, the parts for you. You tell it the voltages. So you've got the 3.3 .3 volts that you're going to use and you tell it a common anode. Now that sounds all a bit IoT. Um, they've pulled it out completely for the um, for this uh, um, wrong one. I wanted to use the uh, this one here. Um, I do this again. Why is it not working? All of a sudden, that's because I'm pushing it too many times. There we go. Um, you can see there um, the, the 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 construct of that um, is the fact that a lot of the parts, the voltages and the common cathode anode part are, are all, always got defaults anyway. So you don't actually need to put them in. But for this sample, they've put them in there as well uh, for you. And then cycle colors, I'm just writing constant white line, cycle colors. And then it just goes through in a while loop and just pulses the colors um, and sets the duration. So you remember at the top here, we set a thousand milliseconds. So obviously a second. So every second it's gonna cycle through each of these colors and uh, write that out to uh, out to the, uh, uh, LED and you can see down at the bottom here um, it's calling color pulse I'm saying that I'm changing the color too and I'm passing the color so you can see the construct of the color and then we set the uh, onboard LED to, and their start pulse it just basically just raises that color up and down so it just kind of pulses a bit like a heartbeat um, and then we set the duration for a second and then we stop that and then it gets called again so if we look down at the bottom here you can see changing color too, and you can see um, RGB colors and the hues and saturation um, is all being pulled through as well. So what do we do here is we would need to, once we've got this, uh, we've written our code in .NET, we know and love, it's .NET standards, so we can pull in our NuGet, so JSONs and uh, new, uh, Newtonsoft JSON, we can pull all those in and use them just like you would 
writing a bit of code for a Raspberry Pi, a full-on machine, a Windows machine, or indeed your IoT project. Once you complete, at the moment, if you, you can't use the, um, the, the wonderful F5 for, uh, for running the program, because it runs it within Visual Studio on your machine, not on the IoT board, so it wouldn't work. But at the moment, uh, that is coming. It's not far off. Um, so you just literally need to click on the project and click deploy it, and it sends it down to, uh, down to the uh, board. So I click deploy, and we go down to um, the bottom here. You can see here it's deploying out. It's connecting to the board on COM11, which is where my board is connected to. And we'll see that it will start to uh, to copy across the, the files. And um, hopefully it does it a little bit quicker than this. Um, it should do it fairly quickly. Come on. <laughs> um, there you go. It's starting to check the files on the board. And because I've, I've already pushed this to the board, it should do it fairly quickly. A lot quicker than this. Um, there you go. So you can see it's done that and it's pushed it out to the board. So we look quickly at um, the build. Uh, we can see here that, uh, if I just make that a touch bigger, um, you can see here that what is pushed down is pushed down our app um, is the app.exe and um, MS Core Lib um, is your normal .NET uh, MS Core. Uh, the Mono Security is copied down the, the, the bits of uh, system, uh, .NET system that's being used. The foundation is for all the uh, onboards, because obviously using onboard LED. Um, so these are all kind of standard things you know and love um, with playing with .NET. And the good thing is that now if, I'm not sure if you can see um, on my thing here on my video, if you're watching it, you should be able to see the fact that our lovely little hello world of an LED is blinking and changing color. So. That is the hello world of .NET and um, running it on the IoT board. But if I go across and pull in our, um, our uh, command line, there's a wonderful CLI tool as well um, that you can use in here. And if we just list the files, um, it should connect to, um, it should connect to it, hold on, that's why it's because it's in. There you go, it's going to run the app and it should list the files as well. So that'll be the files that are copied across. Um, you've seen them anyway, it will copy across. There you go, it's crashed on me. Hey ho. There you go, it's finally done it. And you can see there it's copied out the colors. And because I'm connected to it now, um, because I've done this, everything that's written to the command prompt is now appearing in my command prompt uh, within the CLI tooling as well. Um, so I can read all that out as well, uh, which means you can then um, use a, a program that's on your PC um, that you write yourself in normal .NET to read those commands in um, across um, the uh, USB connection um, by just reading what's being written out to the screen there and, and do things on your normal PC as well, reconnecting that way, uh, which is a wonderful way of uh, collecting data as well. It's a fantastic board. They're only $50 um, shipped to your door. Um, and, uh, you know, you can write .NET, so you too, being a .NET developer, can write OT projects, push stuff up to Azure and the cloud, uh, if that's what you want to do, um, and, um, you know, make wonderful projects that will run on a LiPo battery, a small LiPo battery, even a coin cell battery, will run for days in the field. Um, um, so, yeah, that is my lightning talk, as quick as I can do it. <laughs>